हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग पार्ट टू अंडर द एजेस ऑफ पॉलीमर प्रोसेस इंजीनियरिंग नाउ हियर यू कैन सी दैट व्हाट डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स वी हैव कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस सेगमेंट वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग मशीन देन गिव अ ब्रीफ आइडिया अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग देन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग मशीन्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द advantages and disadvantages associated with the various injection molding machines because it always attributed to the different parts like different parameters like pressure uh, temperature speed of the barrels all those things so we discussed all these things then uh, we discussed about uh, the breaking down of uh, injection molding cycle because to the continuous operation it is quite essential to have uh, knowledge about this breaking down operation then uh, we discussed about the injection molding tooling and uh, we have already discussed about the different terms related to the injection molding like l by d ratio compression ratio uh, back pressure injection speed and the cushioning all those things we discussed now in this uh, particular chapter we are going to discuss with the different types of materials being used for the injection molding process now you see in the previous chapters we discussed about the different type of a polymeric systems polymers synthesis a uh, classification of the polymers and moreover in the last segment we discussed that the the product quality or the type of injection molding or a type of a mold it all depends on the material which you are using in that particular aspect suppose we need to prepare a bucket of polypropylene then based on that particular thing how what should be its melting temperature what should be its density what is the impact for the temperature to the the polypropylene so all these things are quite essential before we set the parameters for the injection molding machine now this particular information is extremely important so based on this we have decided to cover the the topic pertaining to the material which can be used in the injection molding machine so basically in a broad spectrum we can divide these materials into the thermoplastic thermoset elastomers and uh, we'll discuss about the the material processing fundamentals like crystalline amorphous semi crystalline behavior and the molecular weight and its distribution viscosity density some of things we have already covered in the first segment then viscoelastic behavior newtonian non newtonian then effect of uh, temperature on the polymeric behavior orientation so all these things because the temperature plays a very crucial role uh, be because ultimate aim is to get uh, um, the final product in the desired form but if we are not maintaining all these parameters then it may get we may get the deformed uh, uh, part or we may get uh, the product which is not as per our specification or as per desired so let us discuss uh, the first segment that is materials the various materials can be used for the injection molding there are, broadly we can divide these materials into two segments thermoplastic and thermosets like in thermoplastic you can use the high hdp high density polyethylene low density polyethylene dpe polypropylene polystyrene polyamide polyethylene terephthalate pet polyvinyl chloride and thermosets various different type of epoxies melamines phenolics polyurethane unsaturated polyesters so all these things can be injection molded then uh, there are certain thermoplastic elastomers like uh, polyolefin blends polyolefin alloys styrene polyamides polyesters polyether esters polyethenes polyester urethanes polyether ester urethanes polyether urethanes all these things can be used in the injection molding process now here you see that uh, uh, when we discuss about the material used for the molding again we can subdivide the things into three different segments crystalline or the semi crystalline amorphous and filler now here you see that different type of uh, the thermoplastic materials with the different properties and what different kind of the process being used to get the useful product like polystyrene it is having the low cost moderate heat distortion good dimensional stability good stiffness impact strength now here the process can be used like injection molding or a continuous laminating similarly nylon it has a high heat distortion low water absorption 
low elongation, good impact strength, good tensile and flexural strength and it can be injection molded or sometimes blow molding. Blow molding we will discuss in a separate segment and uh, the rotational molding. Then polycarbonate, it is a very common commodity plastic. This is having the self extinguishing, high dielectric strength, high mechanical properties and it can be injection molded. Then styrene acrylonitrile, this is the good solvent resistance, good long term strength, good appearance, it can be injection molded. Acrylics, they are having a very good gloss, uh, weather resistance properties, optical clarity, the color, the excellent electrical properties, it can also be injection molded. All uh, uh, apart from this, this can be the vacuum forming, compression molding can be carried out with the acrylics as well as the continuous laminating. We will discuss all these uh, segments in due course of time. And vinyl, we are excellent weatherability, superior electrical properties, the excellent moisture and chemical resistance, self extinguishing, and this can also be injection molded. Then acetals, these are very high tensile strength and stiffness, dimensional stability, high chemical and abrasion resistance, this can also be injection molded. The purpose of this particular properties is that once you require the specific properties, you must have a material of the, your choice. Like suppose if you are you need the simplest material, versatile and economical, widely used the family of resins, you must choose the polyesters and they are because they are also having the good electrical properties, good chemical resistance, specialty, especially to the acids, etc. So, they are having the very good resistance uh, attitude towards the these type of attacks and this can also be injection molded. Apart from this various other processes can be used to get the desired product like compression molding, uh, filament winding, hand layer, mat molding, pressure bag molding, all these things can be carried out. Then epoxies, they are having excellent mechanical properties and these are the thermosets. And the dimensional stability is again very good. The chemical resistance they are possessing have good chemical resistance, low water absorption, low shrinkage properties and a good abrasion resistance. So, if you are looking for the material which is uh, um, quite essential for this one, then definitely the epoxies are better choice. And also you can go for uh, the compression molding, filament winding, hand layup continuous uh, pertussion, encapsulation, all those things can be carried out. So, when we are discussing about the other thermosets, now the phenolics, again they are having a good choice. They are having the good acid resistance, good electrical properties, um, high heat resistance and they can be compression molded, they can be having the continuous laminating, all those things. Then silicons. The, they are having the highest heat resistance, low water absorption and they possess the excellent dielectric properties with high arc resistance. So, this can also be injection molded and encapsulation can be carried out to get the desired product. Melamine, very common thermoset. They are having the good heat resistance, high impact strength. Apart from this, the, the uh, dial aisle phthalates, they are also having the good um, electrical insulation, low water absorption. Both of these uh, things can be compression molded so that you can get the desired product. All the switches and other things, they can be compression molded. Now, let us have a brief outlook about the different type of uh, thermoplastics, the crystalline or amorphous. They usually soften during uh, the processing and harden after cooling into the products that can be repeatedly softened by the reheating with the crystalline or amorphous morphology. So, that based on the molecular structure. During the heating cycle, care must be taken to avoid any kind of a degradation or decomposition. Otherwise, you cannot recycle and they cannot acquire this original chemical properties once you are recycling them. So, you have to be very careful about this one. Now, some thermoplastic experience, there are no change or essentially no substantial property changes unless otherwise you, you are not promoting towards the degradation or the decomposition. Some of them though might have substantial alteration because of the impact of heat. Now, Crystalline thermoplastic materials, the polyethylene, 
polypropylene they are example of the crystalline plastics the basic polymer with molecules arranged in an essentially regular repeating structure like seen in the uh, uh, in this particular figure now this behavior reveals the materials morphology which is uh, the study of the materials physical form or a structure and now they often have a high softening points than amorphous polymers and they are translucent or opaque now they can be made transparent with chemical modification now let us talk about um, the amorphous materials now the material in which the molecules they are lie in a random fashion they are uh, amorphous plastics in a random fashion now whereby these their molecule tend to flow in all different ways this may cause their structure to resemble spaghetti now uh, they are often glassy translucent and don't have a sharp melting point because of uh, you see the variety of the chains we discussed in the very first chapter when heated amorphous polymers eventually soften and if they are rigid they could have be fragile they could be fragile until they are altered with a specific addition for example acrylic polystyrene polycarbonate abs etc now this is uh, the figure shows the amorphous orientation you see different type of orientation orientation here now in the molecules those who are fall in the crystalline and amorphous pattern you can see over here the crystalline um, they normally has up to 80% crystalline and and uh, structure and the rest is amorphous i'm talking about uh, the thermoplastic now there is a difference between uh, there are couple of difference between the crystalline and amorphous material the crystalline plastic they require more precise control during fabrication processing and which is more challengeable so the although it is controllable but it is challengeable they have a high melting point and they tend to shrink and deform more than amorphous plastic now when melting or solidifying during the processing amorphous polymer only experience the experience minor volumetric change in comparison to the crystalline kind so when hot melt is cooled to solidify the polymers that typically crystallize are not properly quenched which results the amorphous or partially amorphous uh, solid state that often has the inferior characteristic because there is a regular during the melting state there is a regular motion of the polymeric chain so if they are properly quenched then this molecular motion this the chain motion is ceased and then you may have a proper the characteristics but if it is not being properly quenched then some of the chains they are also in the amorphous region and then the, the or they are partially amorphous solid state then you may have uh, some inferior characteristics let's talk about uh, the molecular structure property and the process now three molecular structures or properties affect the processing performance flow condition basically we are more concerned towards the flow condition this affect the product performance like strength dimension stability etc one is the mass or a density next is the molecular weight and then the molecular weight distribution though we have discussed some of the thing let us have a brief outlook about this mass or density the density has a direct effect on the properties such as stiffness and permeability to gas or a liquid and a change in the density may also affect some of the mechanical properties then the molecular weight this molecular weight is the sum of atomic weights of all repeating units or all atom in the molecule which are polymerized having many different chain lengths so the molecular weight uh, of the plastic influences their properties in the first week we discussed about the the effect of molecular weight to the various properties including glass transition temperature etc now an increase in the molecular weight properties increases the abrasion resistance brittleness chemical resistance elongation hardness melt viscosity tensile strength uh, modulus toughness and a yield strength decrease occurs the adhesion melt index and solubility now molecular weight distribution we discuss the three different type of uh, molecular weight distribution pattern number average weight average and viscosity average molecular weight in the first week this molecular weight refers to the average weight of plastics that is always composed of a different 
weight molecules. Now we have already discussed that why polymers they are having the molecular weight distribution because at any point of time you cannot precisely say that polymer mass is having this much of the chain and every chain is having the unique molecular weight so that you can multiply the molecular weight of the particular chain into the number of the, the chains so that you can get the molecular weight of the polymer but it is not easy. The reason is that you are first suppose you are having this P1 monomer. Now this P1 monomer in a reaction mass may combine with the P1 to give you P2. Now here the reaction mass may have the P1 and P2 at the outset. Now this P2 may react with P2 or it may react with P1. So it gives the P4 and a P3. So the reaction mass may have P1, P2, P4. 4 p3 that means p4 they are having 4 repeating units p3 they may have 3 repeating units and p2 may have a 2 repeating units similarly if we go on further polymerization then the system may become more and more complex up to p4 uh, to pn and that is why the chain length is not fixed and that's why we are having the molecular weight distribution right from p1 to pn so, this molecular weight distribution is an important uh, process. A narrow molecular weight enhances the performance of the plastic product because definitely you will have a, a, a more and more useful polymer. Broad molecular weight distribution shows the broad melting point and a narrow molecular weight distribution shows the sharp melting point. So, wide molecular weight distribution permits the easier processing and the processing and the property characteristics of plastics, they are partly a function of molecular weight distribution that may vary widely even uh, among the plastics of identical composition, density, average molecular weight and melt index. So, all these things are essential for a proper processability of a, a polymer. Now, method for usually determining the distribution of uh, uh, molecular weight, we have already discussed that the fractionation, sedimentation, gel permeation, chromatography and rapid estimates, all these things because you know that uh, determination of molecular weight distribution is essential for the to assess the polymer being processable or not. So, you need to carry out this particular analysis before you go for the processing. The viscosity, this uh, material's viscosity this can be determined by the amount of a melt flow resistance it exhibits. There are so many methods available as on date to find out the viscosity. Now, the processing behavior of plastic is related to the flow of uh, plastic melt as we see, we saw in the, in the first segment of this injection molding because uh, the processing, because if uh, the viscosity is too high, then uh, the energy consumption and deformation may take place. But if the viscosity is too low, then either the, the, the product may not have the such kind of a, the properties which is required or it may in a flow of behavior. So, proper pressure cannot be applied in the injection molding machine. So, the proper viscosity is essential. Now, if the internal, it is the internal friction or resistance of a plastic to flow. Now, it is a constant ratio of the shearing stress to the rate of a shear. Now, shearing is the motion of a fluid layer uh, one over other like uh, a deck of cards. So, uh, like if you are moving then this these surfaces are resistance impart the resistance. So, suppose I am moving this then the lower part of the surface tends to go into the opposite direction. So, it is just like whatever pressure you applied for moving a deck of cards. So, the when plastic flows through the straight tubes or a channel, they sheared and viscosity express their resistance. So, if it is in the tube, then this is the stagnant layer and movement is like this. The higher temperature favors the movement of molecule further apart because in that case the viscosity is very low. On the increase of the temperature, there is a decrease in the viscosity. So, it favors the thing, but simultaneously must have an optimum viscosity. Otherwise, it may create a problem with the period of time. Let us talk about the Newtonian uh, melt flow behavior. The flow characteristics where the material flow immediately on application of the force. The rate of flow is directly proportional to the force applied. Now, it is the flow characteristics evidenced by the viscosity and that is independent of shear stress or strain. Now, here you see 
the 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 newtonian and non newtonian behavior this is the shear stress rate and shear stress now he, this is the non newtonian plastic and this is the newtonian one the the, the non plastic now this type of a material has a basically abnormal non newtonian melt flow behavior this type of a material has basically abnormal flow response where force is applied the viscosity is dependent on the rate of a shear and they do not have a straight proportional behavior with the application of force and a rate of flow now if a proportional the behavior become the newtonian flow the melting temperature it is very crucial as in the pre uh, previous segment we see that the melting temperature is uh, you can say the triggering point of a smooth operation of uh, any injection molding machine now this is also known as the melting point and usually represented as tm which the plastic liquefies on heating or solidifies on cooling so the proper information of this melting point is quite essential now it is depending upon the processing pr pressure and time heat particularly during at slow temperature change for relatively thick mass so when melting temperature is too low the melt viscosity is high so more power is required to process the plastic that means the economics is on the lower side sometimes degradation can also occur if the viscosity is too high because of the frictional heat being generated when the material is being processed so the amorphous crystalline regions can be determined uh, or identified by the peaks of a differential scanning calorimeter uh, through the thermal analysis test melt flow rate that is used to detect the degradation of the fabricated product where the comparison as an example they are made of the melt flow rate or uh, pallets to the mfr of the product now the melt flow rate has a reciprocal relationship to melt viscosity and melt flow rate is inversely proportional to the molecular weight so that's why molecular weight is again very important to determine melt flow performance is again very important now in practical deformation there is a local stress concentration the deformation at the stress concentration this um, will be less rapid than in the surrounding material so the stress concentration will be smooth and the deformation stable so when the viscosity decreases with the increased stress any stress concentration will cause the catastrophic failure sometimes we need to discuss about the melt flow defects the melt flow defect play a very important role in many processes as they affect the appearance of the product the defects can be identified and corrected it's a routine process and these flow analysis can be related to the other process and even complex flow injection molding melt index the melt index is an indicator of average molecular weight of a plastic and a rough indicator of the processability due to the molecular weight distribution as we have discussed in the previous lectures low molecular weight material have a high melt index and easy to process high molecular weight material because of the bulky character have more resistance to flow and they have low melt index and are more difficult to process so every time when you go for this type of a melt index concept then molecular weight distribution you need to uh, to draw a plot for the molecular weight distribution influence on melt flow with the help of uh, viscosity versus shear melt index versus density relation now here you see that uh, you plot a graph for increasing melt index and the decreasing density for the different uh, um, index like barrier properties uh, Um, hardness tensile strength and resistance so at a, at a at a fixed melt index if you increase the viscosity then it will go up then the flexibility and elongation impact then rigidity creep resistance heat resistance the, the clarity surface gloss and toughness stress crack resistance melt resistance so all these things are very important and you see when it it gives you an idea that how melt index and density influence the polyethylene performance so for every polymer you may have such kind of a, a plot now let's uh, discuss about uh, the effect of temperature on polymer structure now temperature 
can do influence on the behavior of uh, polymers change in phase from solid to molten state which is desirable in case of uh, injection molding. Now such change involve melting point and the transition that result in change in state or phase they are classified as a transition. Another form of transition can take place in polymer like second order this shows the type of uh, polymeric behavior. It gives a relation of a logarithm of a mechanical modulus for polymer as a function of temperature. Now as on heating, if you keep on heating, the polymer goes from the glass to leather to rubber to ultimately liquid flow. So because when you are heating, initially the, all the polymer chains are entangled position. So upon heating, the, the shear is coming out and the polymer chains, they try to get in unentangled so that they start the melting and that is the glass transition temperature then leather to rubber and all those then the liquid flow. The glassy region the polymer chain frozen in a fixed position and formed and disordered structures like discussed that entangled position and resembled as a lattice. These segments vibrates along the fixed position as uh, to do as do molecules to the molecule lattice. Now the leather and um, uh, leather or transition reason, the polymer chains like here you see, the polymer chain segments undergo short range diffusional motion with the diffusion time from one side to another is in the order of say 10 Ken. Now rubbery reason, the short diffusional motion of the segment become very rapid and now many chain segments become involved and increase the retardation by the chain in entanglement and resembled the temporary cross link. The rubbery flow, the motion of the polymer molecules as a whole, this change in the major configuration, uh, co configuration and uh, th this is uh, you see that at the start of uh, uh, the flow, the liquid flow, the long range configurational changes, the, uh, this occurs very rapidly and all polymer have a glass transition temperature. The glass transition temperature, we have already discussed in the first week, this temperature at which the polymer goes from glass to leather region, when it starts, just to start uh, the, the flow. Now glass transition is the second order transition as contrast to the first order transition that is a melting point of a semi-crystalline polymer. Now here you see that this is the glass transition temperature when this, this is a triggering point. Orientation, the orientation, this represents the alignment of the polymer molecules. So for, for crystalline structure, the orientation can uh, and does occur in the amorphous material. On applied mechanical stress, the amorphous polymer molecules uh, or the crystalline, this will be oriented. It is possible for orientation to bring about the crystallization and this occurs when the crystalline polymer have melted into an amorphous state. So there are three principal methods for measuring the orientation in polymer. One is the XRD or X-ray diffraction pattern for crystalline polymer. Then an, uh, brief ringens uh, measuring the optical polarized microscope and by the sonic modulus. The orientation, this is usually carried out with the X-ray XRD, the X-ray diffraction uh, pattern. You see that uh, different type of uh, XRD patterns like amorphous, semi-crystalline and highly crystalline. Now this orientation can be determined by the B refringence and this can be done by the measuring with the optical polarized microscope, the reflective indices of the polymer in the direction parallel and perpendicular to the orientation. Now here you see that uh, the polarized optical microscope image for different reasons like optical microscope scope image identifying the preferential orientation in the order of domain film deposited from toluin and this is the sketch of a polymer backbone orientation. Sonic modulus is the third one to determine the orientation and this is done by the transmitting a sound wave through the polymer sample. So the temperature and the sonic molecule it gives you that which type of the plot it is and by this way you can assess that whether it is oriented or non-oriented. Now here you see that the sonic velocity of uh, three polymer films plotted against the orientation, the PET film, 
and then the polypropylene and the polyethylene. You see the different type of orientation with respect to the angle and you can determine the nature of the polymers. So, in this uh, uh, particular uh, segment, we discussed all about the different materials because in the first segment of uh, injection molding we discussed that uh, the product quality, product form, all these depends upon that what different kind of the materials you are using and what is the affinity with others and uh, how this uh, particular thing is processable into the different machines. So, we had a brief outlook about the different type of a thermoplastic, thermosets material, how, what different kind of a things you can form and what kind of a different processes you need to adopt. Uh, for your convenience, we enlisted references you can use as per your requirement. Thank you very much.